Alberta. A province rich in resources, spectacular mountain views, farmland as far as the eye can see, and hardworking people proud to call it home. The TV and film sector of Alberta knows what this province has to offer and loves to work here. Alberta has a friendly environment, professional crews, and scenic landscapes which add real character to any project thrown our way. Crews here have a swelling sense of pride whenever they talk about the amazing projects that have been shot here. You'll find professional and friendly crews in this province, whether it be on a local TV show, an indie feature, or a blockbuster Hollywood production. The TV and film industry has been growing in Alberta for decades. We provide jobs for Albertans while showcasing this beautiful province to the world. It's a tough job, but we make sure the people of this province can be proud of the productions made here by our hardworking crews, regardless of economic times. COVID-19 hit the world like a bomb. Nobody expected it, and as the world started to shut down, many people were left wondering what would become of our industry. Well, no surprise, everybody knows that in March of 2020, uh, the, the pandemic shuttered the, the film and television industry entirely. So not only could people not go to movies, but we could not make content in any way, shape or form. In Calgary here, we were shuttered for 3.5 months. So from mid-March and into July, there was no production here. We had to close the facility. COVID came along and um, basically wiped out the live game. And that's what a lot of my rentals were based on. Um, two and three camera shoots to do uh, weddings and corporate videos and small sports venue shoots. So when the rules came down that we had to have all this COVID um, spacing and there was no venues to go to, then I basically lost all of my rentals. Um, well, it's been significant. Uh, as all of us know, we were shut down for three and a half months. So what that did is that put a, a pause on film and television globally. It's definitely slowed things down a little bit in terms of how much they can shoot, how many background actors they can have on set, where people are allowed to go, kind of the flow of everything and individuals kind of throughout the facility has kind of been the main, the main challenge so far. Uh, we have different areas where people aren't allowed to go, where people were able to go beforehand. Um, it's changed absolutely everything about how we approach from storytelling to our day-to-day -day operations, it's literally impacted everything we, we do. While the rest of the world struggled to find new ways of doing business, the film and television industry was able to quickly adjust. Why? Because safety challenges are the norm for our business. Whether it's running through a burning building, dodging bullets, or dangling a Hollywood star off the side of a cliff, the film and TV industry have always found ways to make the unsafe safe. And during that time, we researched what was happening in the rest of the industry, we watched what was happening with public health and safety guidelines, and we tried to determine uh, and anticipate what might be needed on reopening for, for a health and safety environment, like a, a workplace safe environment for our production crews. Uh, how we start our day for the morning meeting, everyone's remote now, uh, to how we do interviews. You know, we do a lot more Zoom interviews now and stuff outside. Uh, it, it's forced us to be a bit more nimble in how we operate, as well as a bit more creative in how we tell stories. It's a major impact. Obviously, you uh, have a significant amount of money that's being um, spent on COVID protocols, whether it's testing, whether it's PPE, whether it's how you align your facilities so you have the capacity to do your walk-arounds, creating your quadrants, all of the things that are necessary for us to be able to, uh, to be successful as film and television. We determined um, one of the initiatives we'd like to do is to uh, make everything touchless here at the facility. So we can now walk through the entire site without touching a doorknob. We, we uh, installed all touchless doors. Um, you get hands-free toilets. We have um, hands-free sanitization stations everywhere. And we worked with our tenants uh, around sets and everything else on directional mapping. 
So coming out of COVID here a little bit, we've had to kind of revamp the entire facility where we've gone hands-free for as much as possible. There's, there are still the um, areas that we can't have that are hands-free. Um, some entrances in order to keep sound quality and visual quality, we have to have as pole handles still on doors. But as much as possible, we've gone to hands-free systems. We had the privilege to continue to work and to uh, you know maintain our jobs. Others were not able to do that. And during that period of time, you also couldn't be out there hunting for jobs. So it made it very difficult. And I think it's important for us to be able to, um, as a human, as human beings, if we don't have direct physical contact with people, how do we continue to keep ourselves focused on things that are positive, rather than going into areas that, that create that consistent negativity? The entire province is asking, how do we get back to a sense of normalcy? Albertans are asking what needs to be done to get Alberta's economy rolling again. The TV and film industry might just have the tools needed to make this happen. The film and television industry is in a unique position to be able to help diversify our economy. So we are, as everybody knows in Alberta, it's been a bit of a dip lately uh, in terms of oil and gas and other industries. We are trying to move and shift towards diversifying and film and television um, can not only attract direct uh, foreign service provider uh, companies, but we also can develop and grow our own IP and support our producers in Alberta. It's super important that we have the film and television industry uh, rolling. It's a tough game as it is with the way the internet is coming to play, um, but it also has placed a, uh, a spot for us to build content for so many different places. It's huge for the economy. It keeps everyone working, keeps multiple tradespeople and uh, the entire community involved. Well, I know for film, it's a, a major driver. A lot of productions come up here and it involves a, a large team of people to put together a film like this. But I know for us uh, at Global, it's about you know telling the stories of Calgarians, holding elected officials to account, uh, telling important stories about what's going on in the city, keeping Calgarians informed. Um, giving people an opportunity to have um, entertainment in front of them is extremely important. Uh, if we remember that those first scenes when this um, when the lockdown first started and you remember Italy and you watch these people playing on balconies playing music and others you know in tears because this is the, the thing that that allowed them to have some kind of normalcy to, to, to their lives. We employ all kinds of different people we have the ability to train people coming out of school, we have great post-secondaries coming through with filling seats and filling positions, but we have the ability to access underemployed areas that have been let off in terms of people that might be in construction or paint or electricians or people that could move from other industries, including accounting, into the film and television industries. So for us to continuously grow the sector, there's all of these pieces that have to happen. So the unions, the guilds, the, the film commissions, the government, um, the city, everybody is working in that same direction to try to grow the sector. And the more that you can offer, the more attention you're gonna get. And in many instances, what it gets down to right now is this, is that infrastructure and people. It's, it's extremely important. Uh, at the beginning of this thing, when it was just mass confusion, and it was, I remember it was a March 5th last year, it was the first case. What's this mean? Uh, Dr. Hinshaw comes up for the first time. And it was, everyone was very much in a bit of a panic because at the time, we didn't really know what the virus was, how deadly it was, you know, how this would impact us on a daily basis. And so these, these making sure that we were, you know, not just airing the uh, press conferences and doing stories on the press conferences and, 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 health, and health officials updates, but also making sure that all that information was being put out to Calgarians in a timely manner. The current state of TV and film production in Canada shows how far Alberta has left to grow. Statistics show that British Columbia has the largest TV and film industry in the country, sitting at $4 billion. Toronto sits just under, with $3.2 billion. Alberta sits at around 400 million. That being said, 2021 is looking to be an incredibly busy year for our province, as many new and exciting projects are set to begin production in Alberta. 
The industry is on a growth curve. It's, we are taking off. So uh, we anticipate doubling production activity, uh, if not tripling, in 2021. Um, some of the projects that are coming into our province right now are some of the biggest projects that are being done in Canada. Albertans will benefit by getting jobs. There's absolutely no, no way around it and the industry will grow. So uh, more and more jobs will happen and more and more talent uh, will happen. But we need to develop and grow our crew base and we need to develop and grow the talent of our crew base. Uh, at, at, many, at deep levels and the large productions, the small productions, the series come in, they help on the training aspect so that thirds become seconds and seconds become first. It just, it, it, it supports the training program and the development of our crew base. Biggest obstacle? Well, I mean, for years it was incentives, right? It was our inability to be um, globally competitive on higher budget projects that would have allowed us to uh, attract more attention to the province, which then in turn would allow us to hire more people and have an outcome that would have grown the sector. So although we've seen growth, it has not been the level of growth that you've seen uh, on our west coast, on our east coast, and even in, in places like Manitoba, that we started to see an escalation of the, the workload. And, and a lot of that prior to COVID was attributed to their ability to be um, to be competitive. I know the director in Toronto right now doesn't like to hear this that uh, he can direct from Toronto, but the trend is coming. The director is the critical path, but uh, due to some uh, COVID restrictions and limited travel, he's tra uh, directing remotely. But uh, again, one of the bigger changes right now is the fact that. Clients are able to see the output of the camera. It's a great quality. We're able to chat. We're able to communicate back and forth. It focuses everybody, but also at the same time allows them to work uh, at their office and uh, not have to take a whole day off to come to set. I know we as a at Global were considered an essential service. We were all given letters. God, it's a year ago now. It would have been like a year ago this week. A year ago, we got uh, you know, the mandate that yes, we are an essential service. We can continue to operate. And we had to carry those letters with us just in case people asked. So we were declared an essential service, I think because mostly we were a news organization. Uh, I'm pro essential service for film and television. And mainly it's because if you just look at what's happened with even Disney Plus coming on during the pandemic, it's, it's, it's taken its market share from Netflix and HBO immediately, you know, and uh, people need content. We can't get enough of it. What else is there to do? <laughs> well, I think, um, you know, from the perspective, yes, because when you talk about essential, there's a variety of, of areas that are called essential. First and foremost, our medical field, right? We need to be able to take care of people as, they, as they're getting sick and, and creating that environment. Secondly is economics. We need to be able to have people working and people be able to, to move forward with careers and transition careers, but to be able to pay their, their mortgages, keep their, their, you know, pay for food that's going on the table. So this is an industry that has the ability to continue to grow and develop and hire more people. So yeah, from that perspective, economically, I think it is one of those essentials. And because of the safety protocols that are in place, it does it safely. And it creates an environment that allows us to have an industry that's on a growth cycle and that has the ability to hire and attract foreign direct investment, which right now in this province is one of the core things that we need to do. We have uh, Y Film in Calgary, we have um, Calgary Creates, one that we call our EQ video that is just about lifestyle in Calgary. So, because sometimes we go to places, sit in, in when we used to be able to travel, sit in meetings in LA, and they say, you know, like, why would, we, why would our creatives want to come to Calgary if we're coming for a series and they have to be here for 12 months? If they have to move their family and go to school, what, you know, what's, what's the quality of life there? So we have specific videos on quality of life here that have been sent out to creatives just to make sure that they know that we're not the backwards town. For us, we've seen some changes in our incentive. We've transitioned into a, a tax credit. 
We've got a government that's extremely supportive of this industry and has identified that we will be going after large budget productions, which we've already seen start to happen here, and that we will be committed to ensure that we're going to be competitive um, on the incentivization side, um, including the increase in the incentive numbers uh, this year in our tax credit. On Friday, March 26, the Alberta government announced changes to our film and television tax credits that will help boost the TV and film industry, draw more production to our province, and allow us to be more competitive internationally. So here today, we're announcing that we're increasing the film and television tax credit in our most recent budget to $50 million. <clears throat> now that being said, if you've got a good project in the film and television industry, bring it to us. We want to see that, uh, that project uh, here in Alberta. We've been out there consulting with the local stakeholders you're going to hear from here today. We've been reaching out to global players like HBO, Disney, MGM, Universal, about how do we make sure we build out this space in Alberta. And the one resounding bit of feedback we received is that we had to remove the per production cap on productions. So we are doing that right now in Alberta. The per production cap has been eliminated in Alberta. These pieces are critical to attracting investors into our province. And like Minister Schweitzer had said, has there been a more incredible time to be able to do that? And with the projects that are coming, um, this will diversify our economy in ways that we can't even imagine. There are a lot of us in the province who have worked a long time uh, to make this industry a success. This is a huge step in ensuring that we can become the economic driver we should be. I hope that the Calgary Film Centre is able to keep growing. Um, we've had a lot of great tenants in over the last six years since we've opened and I hope that uh, we continue that success and keep it going so we can build further and further. These changes will allow Alberta to reel in more productions and land the people of this province more job opportunities within the TV and film industry. We're not just the oil field province anymore. The Alberta economy is starting to diversify. We're evolving and we're rebuilding, all thanks to the hard-working people of this province. Mm -hmm.